IBC book the third, uh, one of the associate editors of Double XL, should uh, uh, introduce myself out the gate. But y'all know me. If y'all been tuned into the show, you know I'm here most of the time. Uh, okay, good to see Jersey in here, for sure. Uh, today's guest is Bam Bam Real. Um, definitely been making noise as recently. Um, you know, rapping over Jersey Club, been pushing Jersey Club. Uh, I think his style is very unique, and what he's been doing is, you know, really interesting. So, you know, definitely happy to have him on the show. Very nice. What's goody? What's goody? What's good, man? What's good? Shit, man. Cool. Wait, I can, I can smoke on this? Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, no more. No more. <laughs> Um, uh, first of all, man, thank you for doing the show. I don't pop that. I appreciate you for having me. You heard it's a blessing. It's an honor. Absolutely, man. I appreciate that. Um, all right. So, I mean, let's start from the top. How did you start making music? Um, I started making music, um, around, like, around, like, when we started getting out of school for, like, COVID and shit. Mm-hmm. My homies and shit was rapping and shit first. But, um, like, basically, I was just on, like, money timing for real. But I had opened up the stool in my house. Like, I, I had, you feel me, bought everything, opened up the stool in my house. But at the time, it was just for the homies. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, you know, when niggas had got out of school for COVID and shit, I was like, I might as well just use this shit, you feel me? It's right here, you feel me? I started recording shit, the homie like, nah, that shit hard. You heard, keep going. But I ain't really never want to be no rapper, though. Right. Um. Why didn't you want to be a rapper? You just didn't see it as, like, serious, something to take serious? Nah, like... Uh, I got 11 brothers, you heard? So, like, I, like, mad at them rap. Like, I, mm-hmm. that was day lane. Like, I was on some boxing shit. You feel me? So, like, so I, rapping never really, you feel me? Like, this just wasn't my thing at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so you said pretty much when you started, pretty much out the gate, your friends were, like, they supported you kind of out the, yeah, from off, when off you started. The yeah, off the so, rip. How did you... Like, how did you, did you feel when you were first making those songs, did you feel like, oh, I just know how to rap because you had been around it so much? Kind of, how did you know? Nah, that? for sure. Like, I definitely knew, like, when I first started, like, because I, I be listening, to, when I first started, I was listening to my shit, and I was listening to other niggas' shit. I'm like, nah, niggas can't fuck with this right here, you heard? <laughs> like, nah, you heard? So, like, and then after a while, like, I started realizing, like, nah, it's like, I was kind of talented with it, you feel me? Like, I, you feel me? So I was just like, nah, I'm going to keep doing it. That is what it is from there. When, and that and when you started wasn't too long ago. What was it? It was two years ago. Yeah, it should be like coming up on like two years, like uh, yeah, like two years, yeah, for real. Okay. So when you first started out, how did you sound? Like, kind of, what was your approach? How has it changed over time? Uh, I was making like paid music type shit. Like, I was just rapping about shit that I was going through, like, mm-hmm. going on around me, and then um, and then uh, after like my third song, that's when I like transitioned into like. Like my third song is when I fully transition just club music. What was the third song? Heartbroken. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I've definitely heard it. I've definitely heard it before. Um, after you made so after you made that, that's when you were like, okay, I can switch it to another lane and make it work, pretty much. For sure. For sure. Um, I definitely want to talk to you about Jersey Club, like because I know in Jersey it's just part of the culture. It's kind of been part of like Jersey culture for a while now. Um, sure. I know, so pretty much you came up around it and came up with it. But when did you, when were you like, all right, I'm going to rap over it? Because I'm sure you had heard it and it was around you in general just with being from Jersey. But yeah. when you decide, I'm going to rap on it. Um, shit, I was I was talking to my man's uh, do five. He do interviews and shit. He was just like, yo, hey, like, Jersey Club, that's our shit. Like, why nobody ever rap on it? Like, everybody always be saying how, like, like, Jersey don't got no blueprint or, like, we don't got no sound, but, like, mm-hmm. we really did. It's just nobody, you feel me? Nobody used it. So when you first started rapping on Jersey Club, were you thinking, I mean, you were already confident because out of the gate, your friends were like, yo, you got it, and you started to believe yeah. it. But when you started rapping over Jersey Club, like, kind of coming, like, the early days, were you ever thinking, oh, I don't know how this is going to catch on. I wonder how people are going to react to it? Nah, I, I, I fake do because, like, before I even dropped the song, the TikTok already went viral. Like no, I, I had made a TikTok to it, like and shit, and like niggas, and, like when I did that TikTok, hit like a, a million in like a day. So and niggas like, nah, nah, you gotta drop that shit, gotta drop that shit, gotta drop that shit. They, niggas like, I never heard nothing like this ever. I'm like, all right, they fucking with it. So for me, if they fucking with it, I, I thought it was goofy. Like I ain't gonna style. Like I, <laughs> I, I did not know that shit was gonna go off like how it did. For me, but it, it did, what it did. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that's funny. I that's funny. That's you just being honest about it, right? You just feel this is the truth. Uh, but I mean, you know, it worked out a hundred percent. You know, um, okay. So once you start doing Jersey Club, right? When did you? What did you feel was like the song that like really got you hot, like locally now, and it's really starting to turn into a thing? Um, I, I, I'm gonna say heartbroken. Like locally, mm -hmm. locally, after I dropped heartbroken, like. That's just a past, like, I don't say this to be arrogant, but, like, that's just a past, like, anything that anybody ever did when I'm from. Mm -hmm. So, like, it was off off the gate. Off the gate, it was, like, you feel me, like, major, major. And I just kept doing that, drop hitting, you feel me, like, hit after hit, you feel me? Um, Tell me about I Am Newark. I Am Newark. Now, that <laughs> song right there, that heartbroken was one of the ones. Right. But when I Am Newark dropped, that was, like, that was some shit that was, like, really for Newark, though, because, like, Cause like at the time, like a lot of niggas wasn't really fucking with the um, like the whole North, the whole North Club movement. Uh huh. It was like a lot of dick riders, like how it is now. Mm -hmm. But like we, I had put that. Out, I was like, I came up with this idea, just putting that little clip. Uh, you feel me? All the dick riders at the beginning, and then like that shit just turned up for sure. Right, and I think, I, I think too, like you kind of pointing that out. I think that's also why it was so big for you because it's so specific. It's so specific to you know. Yours. Yeah, for sure. No, 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 no. Think about it. That that probably was like the song that got me like no crazy locally too. Cause like niggas be seeing me. The first thing they be like Newark, Newark. <laughs> like, the first thing they say when they see me and shit. That should be funny. Right. No. Right. Cause I think that I think that's important. You know. Um. You know, me being from Brooklyn, and you know, I, I think people kind of lose sight that New York is like not the only state in our area or in the, even nah, like before. niggas be thinking Jersey is New York. Like this shit be right. crazy. Right? <laughs> right. So like, that's why like, I be trying to put a lot of emphasis on this Jersey shit. Cause a lot of niggas be trying to play Jersey out for sure. Like, like niggas be saying Jersey, they're trying to sound like New York or trying to sound like Philly, but like, you know, we got our own thing. You feel me? Right. No, a hundred percent. Um, okay. So when, when did you sign and was getting signed like a goal of yours? Nah, again, sign was definitely was a goal of mine. I just signed like um, uh, two months ago, a month ago, mm -hmm. or something like that. I signed the Warner Records and shit. Shout out Steve O. For me. Um, when you so when you got signed, I think what was it like? What was important for you? What were you looking for from labels? Was it like a being able to stay creative kind of thing? Like what? What? Kind yeah, of like labels. I wasn't really looking for. It wasn't about the money for me. It was about if you believed in the vision. Cause I knew where I wanted to take this shit, and like a lot of labels, they sell you a dream and say they do this for you or do that for you, but like you gotta go with the label that you really feel as though that's gonna help you and stick with you through the wins and the losses. For me, I knew one that was going for me, stay around for the long run. And I think that's important too, especially when you're an artist that's making a sound that's really specific to their region. If the label doesn't get it, yeah, like, they don't get it. It's over. Cause right, if they don't get it, that's it. for sure. Right. Um, so. Jersey Club, very specific. Club music in general has been picking up for months and months now. Mm -hmm. um, what role do you feel you play in kind of expanding the sound and taking it elsewhere and kind of taking it to the world? And what do you want to do to keep, like, spreading it and getting, a different, getting it to different people? Um, I would say my role, I'm not going to say that I was the very first person to ever rap on the club beat, but I could honestly say that. I'm the one that really took it to a whole new height. Like, mm -hmm. I can honestly say that I'm the one that got the whole world and, like, a lot of artists in, the, in other states, you know, rapping on club beats, like, seriously. You feel me? Because, like, that's all I do. Like, all I do is rap on club beats. You know, there's been people that probably rapped on a club beat, you know, mm -hmm. tried to do something. But, like, like, I'm particularly just taking this sound and turning it into something completely different. You feel me? Right. So I would say I'm definitely a big influence on, you know, basically the whole industry, the whole world that's doing this, you feel me? And to continue doing it, shit, I'm just trying to, you heard, I'm trying to go everywhere with this shit. Africa, Afro Club, you heard, right. the gay club. I'm just trying to, you know, collide with a, a lot of different parts of the world and just take this shit global. Right. That, that kind of how you responded to that goes right into what I was going to bring up. The first song of yours I heard was uh, Close Friends. And yeah. um, what I... I mean, pretty much the thing that I noticed like immediately was like you you were like really rhyming. And I think you take the rapping part of it serious too. Like not you're not sure. just trying to make the song be definitely like I definitely always say like it's not just about the 
like the beat itself is major, the club beat, but it's def it definitely matters what you're saying on it because you could just go on the club beat just saying anything, you feel me, or just like drumming words. But like I'm really like I really lyrical on these shits, you know. And I'm not saying bullshit, you know. If, if I'm saying some shit, it's thorough. Right, and I think that goes right into what you said about wanting to take it everywhere because one thing I've noticed, you know, being in you know music for a while now is. If you can really rap, you can kind of take any regional sound wherever you want it because people will give you a chance yeah. because they're like, you can rap. Like, that's what, sure. <laughs> that's what it starts. That's why, and that's why I take it real serious, you know, because cause at the end of the day, it always comes down to the music. You know, all the hype and the, the, the views and all that stuff is cool. But, you know, the, the music is what's going to get you to sell out those buildings, you know, to get people to really fuck with you. Um, How have you felt that you've been, because I think your songs over time, because you know, you really just put out a lot of things over time, but the musicality of it and like kind of how you were rapping and stuff like that has improved and has gotten better as you kept going along. How do you feel like you've improved or just gotten better at making the songs, period? Um, I say I improved a whole lot because just like I like, like Heartbroken was my third song. So mm -hmm. it's like, I was, I was still like at the beginning stages of like, it was just all talent. Right. But now, like, bands are, like, I'm in a stew every single day. Like, I'm really working on my craft. So, you know, it's just over time, it's just increasing as it should. Right. Um, you definitely have to ask about uh, Shy E.K., who did the song not too, did the show not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, who have worked together a bunch of times. Um, and the songs that you guys have made together have come out really well, of course. At the most recent one, uh, the second Jiggy in Jersey. Um <laughs> So how did you two start working together and like how did you realize that y'all kind of had um shit crazy because like me me and k like knew each other like before we both even before we both even signed this shit like mm -hmm. we've been fucking with each other music like when we was both like probably like 18 or some shit mm -hmm. like that 17 18 I, I think i'm one year older than him but like so like when as he going up and i'm going up like we just like yo keep doing your shit uh, and they would end up just signing to the same label, like, coincidentally. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So it's just always been all love. So, you know, it's just, with that, it's shit organic. So, you know, it's just right. easy to lock in. And I think that's cool, too, that somebody you already have a relationship is also signed to your label. So you already, you know the ins and outs just based off of that. Like, y'all can have yeah, sure. that, like, you sure. couldn't if you weren't signed at the same place because you wouldn't know. But, yeah, no, that's, that's I think that's really cool. Um, Club Godfather comes out two weeks uh, what can you tell us about it? Uh, what do you want people to, to like kind of expect from it? Shit, man, everything y'all want to hear gonna be on that shit. Like, it's it's like it's hard shit up there. It's like shit for the ladies up there. Like, I don't know. Like, I got all my I got all my body with that shit. I'm just ready. I, I can't wait to put that shit out. That shit, there's so much flavors on that shit. Like, I know they gonna fuck with that one. Um, I wanted to ask about that too because. This is like your first project, pretty much, but you yeah. have been working for like two years. Yeah. Kind of, why did you stick to just putting out solo songs as opposed to putting out like a project before that? Because I know the thing I've noticed too is when you're a rapper and when you start buzzing, people always want you to put out a project immediately. <laughs> so how did you That's like? Why did a you just do that for like two years straight and just be like, no, just wait. Um, I didn't. I didn't feel comfortable with my fan base putting out a um project yet, like. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to wait until um, I felt as though my fans base, my fan base was like big enough for me to put out a project. Like I just wanted, I wanted my shit to to reach enough people to where like, like you know, a lot of people really understand this shit. You feel me? Right. I feel like not a perfect time. No, absolutely. Um, somebody who wanted to everybody, okay, everybody here, you have like almost fourteen, you have fourteen hundred people in here right now. Um, <laughs> but if there was somebody who um, wasn't like well versed in your music or your songs. Like, what were the songs that you that you feel? Oh, they have to hear these songs. The songs that they have to hear these songs that's out right now or on the table? yeah, the one that's out out right now. You gotta get into them. Sheesh, you gotta get into them. my my favorite song that's out right now. Well, hands down, probably had to be Floyd, Lurkin, and what's one more? That they got it here, got it. And you gotta go get a Jiggy and Jersey part two, man. If you ain't hit that, you heard that <laughs> shit. I ain't gonna style like that shit. Like just be thinking about it, got me on the dance right now. You know? like, I ain't gonna style. That's that work right there. Or anything. No, 
I mean, I mean, like for real, like I said, I was definitely happy to have you on here because, you know, I really like the music and I was really, like I said, I was just really impressed by what you were doing. Um, not in just that it's like creative, but like I said before, like you're taking the rapping part of it really seriously. And that sure. that's really helping you continue to go up because, you know, you have a, you have a standard. People know what to expect from you now. Yeah. Um, sure. So when you say, you know, you wanted to wait until now to put the project out, it makes a lot of sense because they know they know what to expect. You have a certain level to expect from you, and you That's now you want to go past that. That's a fact. Right. Um, and, and actually, on bro, I'm dropping at twelve. You heard influence. You heard video dropping at twelve. Everybody in the loft. I'm really told you heard some shit up there. I said some shit up there. You heard. Okay. No, thank you for that. Um. What would you say is the biggest moment in your career so far? Shit. The biggest moment in my career so far would probably be, like, getting signed. Because, like, when I, when I got signed, like, the, the the difference between, like, New Jersey and New York, like, a lot, it's not a lot of rappers that come from right. where I'm from and shit. So, it's like, I really made history when I signed. Like, like I don't say this to be arrogant or cocky, but, like, honestly, like, nobody where I'm from ever made it as far <laughs> as I made it, you heard. So, it was like... You know, a lot of people when I signed, like they was really inst instilling that in me, like, yo, when you sign this deal, like, this is really history right here, like, this is gonna go down. You feel me? So, like, I just always keep that, uh, keep that on. You feel me? On my shoulders, you know, keep me on my, my, my tent. Right. Um. So one thing I was thinking about too, um, with you being from Jersey, mm -hmm. you know how like a lot of, I'm sure you're already familiar with this. A lot of New York rappers, especially if they like do drill or anything even close to that, they can't do shows in New York. Like they get their shows canceled and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, from Jersey, you can, like, do spot pop-ups and do shows out in Jersey and stuff like that. So how do you feel, like, being able to do events and showing up to places in Jersey and kind of just doing what you want? Because, like, even you look at the videos, y'all mm -hmm. going to the beach. Y'all go, <laughs> go wherever you want and start. Yeah, because, like, I don't know, like, Jersey a little different. Like, we going to come, like, like, we turn up. Like, that's the thing right. about Jersey. Like, we, like, it's not a lot of stuff over here, so, like, it's not a lot for a lot for us to do, you feel mm -hmm. me? One thing that we go and do is turn up, you heard? No matter where it's at, it don't matter if it's at the beach, at the party, at the park, right. where we're gonna get it done. And like, around, one thing I, I like about Jersey is like, when it's time to party, it's time to party. Like, you heard, it might go down after the party, but like, when it's time to party, like, it's time to party. <laughs> Right, no, Bro. cause I, I had to bring that up because I mean, like, I love the videos and I think all of, you know, the videos you're putting out, they're all like unique and they also give people like people who've never been to Jersey or kind of don't know about kind of like your youth culture, or your music kind of scene. Yeah. It kind of lays it out really clearly. And I think, you know, I think that kind of stuff is important. I think it's, I mean, you get it too, because you understand the responsibility you have just to Jersey in general. So right. showing them what it is and just, you know, being clear about what y'all are about and what y'all represent. I think that, you know, I think that's big. Um, what's something most people don't know about you? Like, there will be anything that you do that people will be surprised that you're into. Surprised that I'm into? Um, I don't really know for I think everybody pretty much know Bam, man. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really into, like, I'm really into box. I, I'm really into boxing. Like, that's really the only thing. Like, anything besides rapping, like, I'm really, really into is boxing. I ain't gonna stop. When did you start boxing? I, I started boxing. I was like eight, nine. Some shit like that. Right. Okay. No, that's cool. Um. Okay. So before we wrap it up and head out of here, uh, is there anything you want to throw out there? Anything that I didn't ask you about that you want to talk about? Um. Uh, just throw out there. Um, everybody be on the lookout. You heard. You know, Young Mafia, the label. You know, my label. Feel me. I got right now. I got three artists. You know, Fogwala, BBG Stepper, Deuce App. You know. They going bloody in the city, you heard. I just want everybody to get in tune. If you're not in tune already, you heard. Nook, New Jersey, just the whole scene in Nook, New Jersey, you heard. If you're not in tune, please get in tune because it's definitely next, you heard. It's a lot, okay. of, a lot of talent on this side. So let's get in tune with Jersey, you heard. Okay, for sure. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. You already appreciate you again. Absolutely, man. All right.